We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, who is the Holy Spirit, and what does he do in our life? It's so very important, because God the Father is a person, God the Son is a person, and God the Holy Spirit is a person. God the Holy Spirit is not an it, but a person, it's a he. And so this is a beautiful time to talk about how we can enter into a personal relationship with the Holy Spirit. And you know, it's so important to look at this because spiritual life is life in the Holy Spirit. So what does the Holy Spirit do, okay? You know, he does so much. And this is what's so amazing to me because I think we've kind of ignored the Holy Spirit for many, much of my uh, earlier priesthood and, and I think the church itself, we kind of focus on Jesus, we focus on the Father, but the Holy Spirit's kind of ignored, but he is so powerful and he says, does so much in our life. We got to get to know the Holy Spirit. We got to get to know what he does in our life. I made a list as I went through the scriptures of all he does. First of all, listen to this. John 14, 26. The helper is the Holy Spirit. The Father will send him in my place. He will teach you everything and help you remember everything I have told you. He is the reminder of all the goodness that God has done. He's the introducer to the graces and the depth of love, compassion and mercy that's ours in God the Father and God the Son. So here's what the Holy Spirit does in a list, a very swift, I wish I could give all the scriptures, but let me just go through the list. He helps us, he guides us, he teaches us, he speaks to us, he reveals, he instructs, he testifies about Jesus, he comforts, he calls, he fills, he strengthens, he prays, he prophesies, he bears witness, he brings joy, he brings freedom, he helps to obey, he transforms us, he lives in us, he frees us, he renews us, he produces fruit in us, he gives life, he gives gifts, he leads us, convicts us, sanctifies, empowers, he unites us, seals us, gives us access to the Father, enables us to cast out demons. That is a working Holy Spirit. He gives us gifts, huh? What are the gifts we receive? Well, in Isaiah we have the, you know, the gifts, the major gifts, the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit. Do you remember what they are? He gives wisdom to know the difference between good and evil. Pretty good gift. Understanding, the ability to know the, uh, God and accept what God does in your life. Understand that this is God's plan for you. He gives the gifts of counsel, being able to tell people about God, tell people about what good and evil is. He gives the knowledge to be able to gather and recite the facts and the information of God, to really seek who God is. He gives a gift of fortitude. Fortitude is the courage to face evil and never back down, to live the values and the attributes of God in your life, to, live, to choose virtue over vice. He, he has the gift of piety, to live a, a life pleasing to God, reverencing God for who he is. And he gives the gifts of fear of the Lord. Fear of the Lord is a wonder, not to be afraid of God, but to be in awe and wonder of his greatness reverencing God, being naturally curious about who, who this magnificent, loving, beautiful God is in our life. And then, he not only gives gifts, when you get a gift, you use the gift, right? When you're given a gift, then you use the gift to better your life. That gift then produces fruit. It's like a tree that's been planted as a gift, watered, cared for, all that nourishment goes out to the branches and all the branches then produce flowers and all those flowers then produce fruits. So the Holy Spirit that works in us, Christ, Christ is the vine, we are the branches. As branches, we're to, Jesus said, we're to, to produce fruit. What is the fruit we're to produce? Well, I, I, if I use the vine as an image, the, the, what, the sap in the vine is the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit filling us so that we, at the, at, and our branches, we reduce the fruit that changes our life and the lives of those around us. So what are the, what are the fruit of the Holy Spirit? The fruit of the Holy Spirit is found in Galatians 5, 22 to 23. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. 
These are the attributes of God. This is the job of the Holy Spirit to perfect those gifts in us. That is amazing. Well, let's just look at a couple fruits. How do they come into our life? See, this is how the Holy Spirit works. Is this is, I'm going to give you a key how the Holy Spirit works and produces these fruits. Okay, so we look at the fruit of love. He teaches us a, how do you become a loving person? Do you walk down the street one day and the Holy Spirit goes, zap, you're a loving person? No, no. How does it happen? Well, it happens. You learn to love by loving poorly. You learn to love by being in the presence of unlovable people. You learn to love the unlovables. And by the way, that sometimes are the people we deeply love that get on our nerves, like family members, you know, parishioners, not, certainly not the priest, but parishioners sometimes. So we learn to love those who are unlovable, and that creates then the fruit in our heart, because the fruit then grows not by our choice. I would not, I would not want to be with people who are unlovable, absolutely. But the Lord puts those people in our life so the fruit of love can grow because the Holy Spirit then produces that fruit in my life. You understand? But how about joy? The, 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 the fruit of joy. We learn the fruit of joy in the midst of grief. Joy is not happiness. Happiness depends on something that is happening. I go to Disneyland with my family. I am so happy. I come back and look at my credit card account. I am not that happy. You understand? That's happiness. Happiness and happenstance. That's what happens to me. Joy is internal. It is eternal. Internal and eternal. Joy is connecting with the Holy Spirit. And it's not external. It's not, I can't receive this. It's internal and eternal eternal. It's the gift of the Spirit that I live in this vision of what God is doing in my life. Peace. How do you get the, the gift of peace? Well, you go fishing, right? You go fishing. I'm, I'm, a, I'm on the, I'm, I have my fishing rod. I'm on, on the stream. Man, am I peaceful. Well, God teaches you peace when the bur beans are burning, when uh, the kids are crying, when the dog has done a mess on the carpet, and then there's a knock at the door. Do you find peace at that moment? You, you, logically, you can't. But in the Holy Spirit, you can even find peace in the midst of family life, can't you? That's the gift of the Holy Spirit. That's, you cannot produce this. It's a peace, as Jesus said, beyond, beyond what the world can give you. Because it's the Holy Spirit working in you that gives you these fruits. How about patience? Well, that's very easy. How do you get patience? Well, it's the Department of Motor Vehicles. That, that is the place God has used mostly for patience, isn't it? Or other things like people who bug you, people who, who are, 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 are some of you go the other direction when you see them. No, turn around and meet those people because the fruit of patience will be created in your heart when you are dealing with people who make you impatient. That's how the fruit grows not by your will, but by the Holy Spirit. God is so much bigger. Yeah, yeah, look at Jesus. He was so patient. You know, there's no place in Scripture that shows Jesus ran somewhere. He never. He took his time. For goodness sake, his best friend Lazarus died. It took him three days to get to the funeral, and he was five miles away. What a slowpoke. I can't believe it. Have you ever been in God's waiting room? You're waiting, for an answer, you're waiting for an answer, you're waiting for an answer, you're waiting for an answer, you're just in the waiting room, so come on God, come on, come on, come on. God is in no hurry, absolutely no hurry, because His ways are not our ways, His thoughts are not our thoughts. As far above the heavens to the earth is His thoughts and our thoughts. Yeah, patience is something we probably all need to be praying for, because when we're impatient, we don't listen to the Holy Spirit. We listen to all kinds of other voices and all kinds of other things in our heart from fear, doubts, all other things that will cloud our heart. We will know, we'll not know what God wants for our life. Friends, listen to the Holy Spirit. He's speaking to you. Second Corinthians says, With veiled faces we contemplate God's glory and be transformed in His image, ever-increasing glory which comes from the Lord, who is the Holy Spirit. We are be 
being transformed more and more into the likeness of God. I want to reflect the character of Jesus. I, I love Jesus Christ so much with all my heart. And I owe him everything. And God puts, put me on this planet to share that love, to let people know that, that they can have freedom and they can have forgiveness and they can have mercy. And so many people are walking around wounded and broken and lost. And it's Jesus Christ that the Holy Spirit finally says, Jesus Christ finally says, he says, Jesus is your ticket to heaven. Jesus is the one you need in your life. It reminds me of his story. There's a man, he, um, he had two, three sons, and he went to the carnival, and he bought the tickets, you know, the big round ball of tickets, and every time they'd take, come there, go to a ride, three hands would come out, and he'd give them tickets, and about halfway through the day, a fourth hand showed up, and he looked, and he says, who are you? He says, I'm a friend of your son's. And your son told me that, that you, any friend of his, his father would give him a ticket. Any friend of his, of the son's, the father would give a ticket. That's what Jesus is, he's the ticket. And the father says, become friends with my son, you got a ticket. And that ticket is eternal life. But it's not somehow out there, eternal life begins right now, and that's what the Holy Spirit does. He creates new life. He brings order out of chaos, light out of darkness, creativity out of deformity, forgiveness out of sin, healing out of brokenness. He sets people free. Do you want that? If you want that, then you must want the Holy Spirit to be more alive in your life. So let me pray now. It's quite a beautiful thing. I don't know if you realize, but the John Paul II had a huge, huge uh, affection for the Holy Spirit. When he was 11 years old, uh, he was a very frustrated time, a very difficult time. Uh, and his father said, pray to the Holy Spirit, and he showed him the, the hymn, Veni Creator Spiritus, and he said uh, to uh, a group of people in St. Peter's Square, he confessed that for 40 years he's been praying to the Holy Spirit every day, and I think we could do that too. So let's just end with a prayer now, prayer for the indwelling of the Holy Spirit in our life. Pray with me. Next section, we'll continue this meditation on this great gift that we sometimes ignore or we don't really understand, but really is the essence of our Christian life, life in the Spirit. So let me pray. Holy Spirit, powerful consoler, sacred bond of the Father and the Son, hope of the afflicted, descend into my heart and establish in it your loving dominion. Enkindle in my tepid soul the fire of your love so that I may be wholly, wholly subject to you. We believe that when you dwell in us, you also prepare a dwelling place for the Father and for the Son. Deign therefore to come to me, consoler of abandoned souls, protector of the needy, Help the afflicted, strengthen the weak, support the wavering, come and purify me. Let no evil desire take possession of me. You love the humble, you resist the proud. Come to me, glory of the living God, hope of the dying. Lead me by your grace that I may always be pleasing to you. Come Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.